Let's now talk about the first feature, which is support for control systems and calculus. So in version 14, uh, we will have uh, support for such a system inside DSOL value. In the new release, you'll be able to say uh, you have an input function, which is feeding a system, and you want to find the output, the response of the system, and you can do that DSOL value. So as an example, uh, let's talk about a transfer function model over here. So you see the S over here is a Laplace variable. That's a transfer function model. Uh, what you do over here is you look at the poles of the system of the rational function. And you see over here that the denominator S squared S plus five has got two roots and uh, they're both slightly to the left of the X axis, uh, of Y axis, sorry. And uh, they're both place symmetric about the x-axis. So uh, these are the two roots. And uh, if you know your Laplace transform really well, then that tells you that the system is going to have a combination of oscillatory behavior and exponentially decaying behavior. OK, and so if you ask DSOL value in the new release to take this transfer function model, which is never done before, uh, and find the impulse response, the response to direct delta, it gives you back this combination of exponential decay and oscillatory behavior that comes from the negative one half over here and the square root of 19 comes from there. So it's exactly mirroring the behavior in the Laplace space. We have a new function called unilateral convolve in version 14, which will let you do it. So idea is you take the input, you take the impulse response, which you just found out over here. Okay, and lo and behold, the answer which you get is exactly the output response for that input. Okay, so on to uh, vector contour integrals, which uh, are a continuation, as I said, of the 13.3 story. So in version 13.3, we had line integrate, surface integrate, contour integrate, and now we got an N attached to where the numerical versions of those. And uh, why would you need those? Well, uh, as an example, let's look at this uh, classical figure called a Dupin cyclet. And now what you can do is you can ask the question, what is the volume of this Dupin cyclet? Now, uh, the point over here is you probably just want a numerical approximation. You don't want the exact answer. So you say, okay, uh, choose a vector field whose divergence is one. And you can see over here, uh, that's one over three plus one over three plus one over three gives you one for divergence. And then you can apply the uh, Gauss theorem to use N surface integrate to give you a numerical approximation for the volume of the cyclide, but now found out as a numerical surface integral. So truncate sum, is a new function. You can say truncate sum. You can drop in an, uh, a sum over here, and it'll give you an approximation in this case to five terms. So in version 14, we are using a concept called monodromy to improve things for n solve. So let's say you want to solve uh, the equation z cube equal to one. Okay, the cube roots of unity. Of course, you know one of them. One cube is one, but there are two more. So uh, you introduce the parameter p. So uh, because z cube is p, so when p runs around a circle, the z moves only one third of the way. Okay, so the point here is that if you start from one root of the unity, then you can go to the next cube root by going around one circle. So p can keep going around and finding more and more roots. We have an option called max roots, which can be used to specify how many roots you want for your system. So what are finite fields? Well, roughly speaking, uh, they generalize clock arithmetic. How do you generate elements of this finite field? Well, if you take an integer, then uh, in version 14, you can use two finite field to generate an element of the field. Okay, moving on to linear algebra. So we have had this structured matrix program uh, for a long time, like three releases, and now we've got four new structured matrix, symmetric matrix, very important in practice, statistical cetera, Hermitian matrices, uh, their complex cousins, orthogonal matrices, which come with rotation, et cetera, and unitary matrices, uh, which are their complex cousins. So these four matrices can now be used all over the system by using target structure. So you have an orthogonal matrix, it can show up in lots of places using target structure. So we have support for 12 functions, which uh, can now do matrix computation with intervals, which means that you can have uncertain matrices in your input, like over here, with intervals, and you get back the eigenvalues or whatever uh, quite nicely with the corresponding errors. So we have had the hypergeometric function forever. It's got factorials, etc. cetera. Uh, then we had the Appel function 13.3. They are bivariate, two variables, 
And now in version 14, we have the bilateral hypergeometric function, which is actually uh, bilateral just means that the series goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. So uh, this bilateral function, bilateral hypergen PFQ, is a series, but of course you can evaluate it by various tricks like analytic extension, etc., uh, and Borel summation in the more general case.